What's up everyone, Eli here, here to do a uh, black metal video. Um, I guess I'm kind of jumping on this black metal train with the, uh, well I mean video wise, um, the, bla the Stone Cold Classics. Um, I'm a big black metal guy, big fan, so uh, something I'm kind of excited to do. Um, I don't know how much time I put into uh, selecting these albums. I selected 20 albums and I'm going to make it two videos, two parter like usual. Um, I just kind of went through my collection and I, I didn't grab like a definitive 20 by any means. I just went through and grabbed 20 that I really like and uh, they're not necessarily all my favorites from each specific band, but they are albums all dear to my heart and uh, that's all that matters. Um, yeah, let's start. We're listening to Know Your Enemy by uh, Laz Rocket on the stereo up there. I'm drinking a uh, Total Domination IPA from Ninkasi Brewery. Um, pretty decent brewery out of Eugene, Oregon. Um, had this beer many times. Pretty solid. 6.7% alcohol, which is pretty much as low as I like to go these days. I like to keep it up above 8% and above, but it's, it's pretty tasty. I've had it a lot. We'll get started here. So I'm going to do 10 today, and I'll do 10 on the next video. I have everything broken up uh, by country. So I'm going to go country by country five or six countries that I ended up with out of 20 albums. Um, we're going to start out with the U.S. I'm an American, and uh, Americans are notorious for uh, thinking that they're always in first place. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding, although that's not a huge exaggeration. I just We're just going to go with the U.S. first, and that's going to be that. I'm going to start off with uh, Demoncy, or Demoncy, I never really know how to pronounce it. I always said Demoncy, with Fosty and Dawn. I have the uh, Nuclear War Now repress from, I don't know, a couple of years back. Um, some of these recordings that I picked, some of these are, are demos, so uh, I don't know if that's breaking any kind of rule, but uh, whatever. Um, like I said, this is not an album, this is actually originally a demo. There's the original cover right there. Uh, Chris Moyen, 92. Um, what can I say about Demoncy, man? Um, one of the best offerings... Uh, but one of the best contributions to black metal uh, ever to come out of the U.S., I do believe, um, along with some of their other work. Um, some of the best black metal from the U.S., and honestly, uh, in black metal in general, I do believe. So, um, uh, yeah, it's they're, they're one of the bands for me that really put us on the map um, with the, that American-style black metal, you know, very raw, primitive, and uh, yeah, man, they did it right. I'd love to hear some more material from them. I, I want to say, I, I thought I heard they're working on something new, but uh, it doesn't matter. I got their old stuff to listen to, so um, it's a win for me either way. God oh, damn it. I'm running out of space here. Next up, I went with the uh, first album from Inquisition. I can never remember any Inquisition album titles. Uh, in, into the Infernal Regions of the Ancient Cult. I had the... Um, Seeds in the Mist uh, re-released from uh, two years ago or whatever. Um, if you want to see what the original... Eh, fuck. I shouldn't go this far into talking about shit, but... Um, as you might know, uh, when Seeds in the Mist did the re-releases for Inquisition, they, um, they had Paulo Girardi do uh, new artwork for all the albums, which I do love Paulo Girardi. He's a nice guy, and he's a great fucking artist, but... Uh, I do prefer the original artworks. Um, this one, Antichrist Kramer did a lot of their artwork on the later albums. This one, however, wasn't. This was done by a guy named Tim uh, Tim Bishop. Original cover art there. I'm not so familiar with Tim Bishop, so I might uh, I might just have to look into him. Um, yeah, man, what can I say about Inquisition? That uh, I was kind of a latecomer to them. I probably got into Inquisition seven or eight years ago. Um, and I never bought anything from them until, like, three albums ago or something like that. So when those re-releases came out, clearly I was all over it. Um, what to say about Inquisition? Uh, for me, they really stood out. I know they get a lot of, uh, immortal comparisons, and that's, to me, that's kind of fucking stupid. Uh, I don't think they really sound at all like Immortal, other than, um, the vocals are kind of croaky, um, Kind of like Abbott's, but not even that similar. So the, yeah, the, the immortal comparisons are... I don't agree with that at all. Um, I think it's... I'm a lazy person, and, and that's really fucking lazy. 
Um, the music is entirely different. The atmosphere is entirely different. Like I said, the only thing somewhat similar, somewhat, is, is the vocals. Um, a lot of people complain about the vocals in Inquisition. However, I'm kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum where I, I, I'm a big fan of vocals that stand out. Um, a lot of black metal vocalists opt for a style that just kind of sounds really familiar. Uh, Lord Dagon goes for a completely unique vocal style, uh, and I really dig it. It's one of my favorite parts of uh, Inquisition. So. Anyway, we're still in the U.S. here. Next, I'm going to go with uh, Leviathan, the 10th sub-level of Suicide. I believe this was a pretty important album uh, also in the... in, in uh, you know, what would come later after this for uh, black metal from the U.S. Um, I'm not going to say he created anything or anything specifically, um, but what uh, what he did was uh, kind of... St he, was, he was definitely part of starting a sound that would later be pretty influential and, and uh, copied, which was kind of the U.S. Uh, depressive black metal, which would be like Leviathan and Zasthor and... I mean, I'm sure they would take, you know, they would take formulas, borrow from other bands, like everyone has done, but, you know, once again, putting the U.S. Uh, black metal, you know, on the map <clears throat> in, a, in their own kind of unique ways, Astor with this album, I believe, you know, definitely had a hand in that. All these bands did. <clears throat> Here's one that came a little earlier, a little bit before Zast, or, you know, uh, Leviathan, uh, Judas Iscariot, with uh, To Embrace the Corpses Bleeding. This was this is a bit of a newer album. Um, a lot of these aren't super old, but uh, some of them are. This one I think is from 2002, if I remember correctly. Um, Judas Iscariot, definitely for me, one of the most important um, bands, uh, black metal bands that come out of the U.S. Um, not uh, not so much. Uh, I guess they could kind of be in the Demonsi category, but uh, but a little different. Um, raw and minimalistic, very cold you know, cold, biting atmosphere, um, just really grim, <laughs> you know, not to use cliche buzzwords, but just a really grim atmosphere, um, definitely they, they captured, uh, captured the, the essence of, of what black metal should be to a lot of people, and I, I'm one of them. Uh, we got the final album from the U.S., um, and one of the, this is definitely one of the best bands of the U.S., and for me, one of the best bands in black metal, just in general. We got Grand Belial's Key with their debut album, Mocking the Philanthropist. Um, so much of what Grand Belial's Key did resonated with me. Uh, yeah, so much. For me, it started with, if I remember correctly, the artwork. I would see the, you know, the album covers, and it was just... <laughs> something to me that it was so genius yet so simple um i mean look at they just took biblical artwork and like put corpse paint on jesus and for me for some reason i still don't see that as childish or immature or anything i still see that as it's just it's just fucking brilliant um i love it i love when black metal bands will you know mock um you know christian artwork and basically they're de defacing it de de desecrating it if you will um to me, that's that's as cool as it fucking gets. Um, Grand Belial's Key also, you know, they played black metal that, that didn't sound... They didn't sound like every black metal band. They didn't sound like a rip-off of Dark Throne. They didn't sound like a rip-off of, of uh, you know, anything out of Norway or Sweden. Or um, They had their, their own sound. They had a... I mean, a lot of black metals, you know, got a share of punk influences. And Grand Belial's, Belial's Key were no different. But they also had... Um, you know, some very catchy guitar riffs that, you know, had a little bit of, just a little bit of, you know, traditional metal flair in there. Um, the lyrics, you know, nice and blasphemous. Um, everything to me about, about, about this band was pretty much perfect. You know, from the vocals to the riffing to, it just all came together perfectly. And I can't really, to be honest, ever get enough of this band. I, you know, I know they're, they, they have their fair share of controversy, and I'm not going to get into that um, at all. I'm not, uh politics and, and you know, such like that will never will never grace my channel. Um, not something I want to get into or something I care to talk about in my personal life even really. So <clears throat> we shall move on. We're going to take a hop on the plane and fly over to Sweden where we got a couple of classics. Uh, I went with Opus Nocturne from, uh, from Marduk. 
Um, one of my favorite cover arts right there from Christopher Wimp. Um, just amazing cover art. This is Osmos Productions uh, release. This is, uh, shit. I really love <laughs> Marduk, but I'm really bad at timelines. Um, this came from the mid-90s. I can't be sure. I think it's their second or third full length. I, I forget things like this, but um, this is my favorite Marduk album. I love a good lot of them. Um, they don't have anything that I can't tolerate. But they have, you know, they like any band, they fluctuate in quality. But this, for me, was... This is it, man. Um, I love all the vocalists that they've had. But uh, like Eric Bauer said, um, when Legion was in the band, that was probably when they were at their best. Although, I think every time, every chapter in the book of Marduk has has, has had its uh, had, had its own unique kind of stamp. And, it, and it's worked every time. But some people prefer the Legion era. I'm probably one of them. I'd say most Marduk fans do. I mean, um... I mean, a lot of people these days, you know, kind of... Marduk's a band that, you know, they got really popular. Fairly popular, anyway. And, you know, so they're going to come with their detractors, and they're going to they're gonna be criticized for, you know, oh, you know, they, they play too many blast beats, their music is too fast, and not, not, not variant... Uh, not enough variant uh, variation going on. Um, I actually disagree with that. I think there's plenty of variation going on in their songwriting, and uh, they're just a killer band, and that's... That's all I need to say. Next up, uh, I don't know if anyone, or I mean if everyone could, uh, considers this a black metal album. It's certainly not a black metal band. They never were. But for me, I have always firmly placed this album in black metal. Maybe not entirely, but it, and it's definitely had its influence on black metal bands that would come later. I know, and I know that for a fact. I believe its influence is undeniable. Um, not a huge fan of this band, but I do like their early stuff. Catatonia, their debut full-length, The Dance of December Souls. Um, it's mostly considered a Doom Death album. Um, their, their early work is mostly considered Doom Death. And I wouldn't really argue with that, um, but I would definitely say, like I said, if, if, if you don't consider this a black metal album, it, it definitely had, it had influence on black metal sound after this came out in certain bands and certain albums. Um, it's very, I mean, for me, this is kind of like, I could trace, like, depressive black metal. To an extent, I could trace some of that back to this. I mean, this album is as depressing as it gets. I mean, I've at times, I, I have to be in the right kind of mood to listen to this album, because it's so dreary and so desperate sounding and so, so anguished. I mean, the vocal performance on here is, it's, it's, it'll drain the energy out of you. It, it is so desperate and there's just so much despair going on um, you, you can't fake <laughs> a performance like that it's it's very it's very depressing and it's very it's as bleak as it gets man um, this album is pure it, it, it will it'll suck the life out of you man and that's um, that's what a good good you know depressive black metal album should do so uh, I've always considered it that so I think some will agree. Got a couple more. We're out of Sweden now. Putting two, putting only two albums from Sweden on this list was kind of a travesty. But I, I, I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, uh, coordinating this. So it is what it is, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to run with it. We're going to go over to Norway. Um, I got two from Norway here, and that concludes the video. That'll be ten albums, and I'll, I have more from Norway. We'll be on that video so no, almost half this list comes from Norway it's just kind of like Marty's video that's just you know you like what you like um so I went ahead with uh we'll start it off in Norway with Natten's Madrigal from uh Olver uh Century Black uh release here um I'll be honest I do prefer the uh Olver's uh debut um that is an absolute masterpiece um, that, that's my favorite Olver, Olver album, but I've seen um, people already bring that up. And I'm sure people have brought this one up too, but I figured I'm going to try to go with albums that, uh, at least in the circle of these videos that I've personally seen, which has only been a few, um, I kind of went with a few releases that were less talked about. That way, um, and I'm, I'm being honest, I'm saying you know I prefer the album the other guy used, but the other guy used it, and I, I'm trying to bring some variation. Uh, 
It'd be kind of lame if, you know, you viewers uh, essentially saw the same video on everyone's channel. It'd be pretty fucking boring. So I went with this. Um, it's quite a departure in sound from their debut album, uh, which isn't surprising because older... Um, that's kind of what they do, man. They don't usually repeat themselves. They kind of reinvent, reinvent themselves every time they put out an album. And where the first one had a lot, a lot more, a lot more um, foresty atmosphere and folk, uh, folk tinged, you know, music, um, undeniable influence in, in black metal that would come after it. Um, I feel like. With Naughton's Madrigal, it still has that foresty atmosphere, but it's completely different. Um, this album, I mean, you've all heard it, you know, I'll describe it if, if you haven't. Um, this album is incredibly raw, even by today's standards. The production on this album is raw and noisy, and it, it kind of hurts your ears to listen to. Um, it's kind of a, it's always been a painful listen for me, um, but it's very raw, it's intentionally raw. Um, there's a lot of good musicianship going on, but you have to, you really have to pay attention because it's kind of buried under layers of, of static and, you know, the raw production. Um, it's a little bit more, it's, it's, it's more ripping and more furious than their debut album. That was, that one was more atmosphere and a lot more melody. Um, this one's just more of, uh, just an assault on the senses. It's still, it's still got a foresty atmosphere. Absolutely. There were even rumors that this album was recorded in the forest. I don't know if there's any truth to that. I don't know if I've ever actually read interviews with the band saying that, yes, that's true, but the, 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 it's rumored to be recorded in the forest. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's true or not. But anyways, it would be cool if it was. Um, it's, it's definitely still a classic. Like I said, I do believe the, uh, the debut album holds a little more weight and is a little more memorable, but that one is still, for the time that it came out, it's still an undeniable classic. Um, we're still in Norway, as I said. We're going to end it with... Uh, with an album from Satyricon, The Shadow Throne. Look at that beat up fucking case. You can't even see the album cover and the glare and all the bullshit that's going on. Um, I love Satyricon. I love this album. I could have easily gone with, uh, I could have easily gone with Dark Medieval Times or Nemesis Divina, but uh, once again, I went with this one because I, out of the videos I've seen so far, um, nobody's used this particular album. Not saying I'm the first, I'm just saying I haven't seen it. So I, I went with this one, because um, I mean the first three Satyricon albums are almost equally as important in, in my eyes. And this one, I mean, there's no exception. This is their, this is their second album. Um, they ha this album has a big, big influence on what would later come uh, in like the world of like pagan slash Viking black metal. Um, yeah, they, a lot of those bands will take direct influence from this band and this album in particular. Um, it's got a very, you know, just like Dark Medieval Times, it's got a very medieval slash, you know, Viking um, atmosphere, and it's awesome. It's uh, If you like that kind of stuff, um, if you like that kind of stuff and you haven't heard this album, you know, go and listen to this and you will see where all this shit that you like essentially came from. It's, uh, a lot of it's going to... Uh, leave traces to this one right here so if you like that pagan viking stuff and you haven't heard of the shadow throne um it's probably gonna be one of your new favorites it should be because it's better than most stuff you listen to so that uh shit how many was that fuck that was only nine <laughs> i'm sorry i got one more uh just i'm gonna switch formats up a little bit um that's why it threw me off uh so we're still in norway we're gonna jump over to uh forgotten woods album uh, the curse of mankind I recently acquired this, and I actually have a uh, collection update video talking about where I got it, and I, but I haven't posted it yet. I don't know if I'll post that before I post this, so you'll see me talk about this a couple times. Um, I do prefer the the uh, debut uh, from Forgotten Woods as the Wolves Gather, but I don't own it at this moment, so I, I decided to go with this one instead. Uh, this one is still um, goddamn good. This is their second full length. So it still is, uh, still mostly in the vein of that first album. Um, their uh, their first like three recordings or so uh, are very dear to my heart. One of my one of my favorite black metal bands from Norway. Um, if you like shit like uh, Abyssic Hate from Australia or even fuck even Borzum from uh, Borzum from uh, from Norway, which a lot of you will. Um, 
If you haven't heard Forgotten Woods, man, you might have a new favorite band, or at least uh, something that will uh, that will bring uh, great joy to your life. I'd be surprised if you have a, haven't heard them, or if they're not already one of your favorites. But uh, yeah, man, big, big, big players in uh, what would later become known as you know, like uh, depressive or suicidal black metal um, that you can trace trace its roots right back to that band right there. Um, I think they're equally as important as Burzum were in starting a sound like that. So, Anyways, guys, that's ten albums. Uh, I'll re-record my follow-up video probably in a couple days and do the next ten. Um, some, of the, some of the last ten are actually some of my absolute favorites, so it'll be, uh, it'll be fun to talk about those. Um, I've really enjoyed your guys' videos. I've, I haven't seen everyone's. I've seen Marty's. I've seen Pat's, I've seen Eric Bowers, and, um, well, <laughs> those are three guys that I watch every single video that they do, so, um, I, I will have to, if you have a YouTube channel and you've recorded a video like this, feel free to leave a comment, um, asking me to watch it so I can, because I might have, uh, I, I might, it might have went over my head, I might not have noticed that you did one, and I'd really like to see it, so, uh, leave me a comment, um, uh, yeah, or a link to your channel or something so I can go watch it, and I'd love to. Um, I really love seeing people's opinions on, well, people's opinions in general, but especially on a certain subject that I very much enjoy, so, um, you know, your taste might differ greatly from mine, and I, I, you know, I'd love to see your personal, some of your personal picks or albums you consider classics. Um, I almost went with some albums that were a little bit on the newer side, like albums from, like, the last ten years, or even some were, like, from the last five, and I just, I had to leave them out because I, I... I mean, what makes a classic? I mean, a great album might come out in, say, 2017. But, I mean, classic... What makes a classic is an album that stands the test of time, you know? Um, sometimes your your opinions and your tastes will change. You'll, you'll hear an album in two, from 2017 and say, this is, this is an instant classic right here. This one is going to be, in, you know, 10 or 15 years, this is still going to be talked about. And, and two years might go by and you might change your mind. So um, I didn't want I didn't want to use any albums that came out within the last five years, or even more. I mean, I almost I almost threw in uh, something from Nightbringer because from the U.S. I, I think they are um, one of the best uh, best bands in black metal right now. I think they're certainly one of the best bands and uh, black metal bands that the U.S. has ever uh, put out or you know came from the U.S. But I didn't, because, I, I mean, I, I do think that a lot of their work is going to stand the test of time, and I think in 20 years, people are going to remember a good handful of their albums. But I, I passed on them, just because they're, they're still a relatively newer band. So I tried to keep everything at least 10 years old or more. Um, not that I needed to explain that, but I did. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk soon. Cheers. Take care.